Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today this is a tutorial talking about uh, the weave the tube animation I've done in the past. Uh, many people were requesting that and uh, especially recently people asked the similar kind of thing again. So we're going to do that. Let's start. So here we in Blender, let's go to the nodding, create an object and geometry node tree. As always, I'm going to use the presets which you can download for free from the link in the description. I've discussed the similar kind of concepts over and over again. Um, to me, it's kind of very boring to repeat them in the tutorial. So here, I'm just going to take a curve linear into the z-axis and uh, helical connection. And uh, let's increase the values, increase the count. Since we're using the stop mode, increase the count, meaning we are increasing the resolution. Okay. And the next thing, I'm going to take a directional hole and plug that into the radius. I'm going to turn this directional fold onto the z-axis as well. As you can see, there's an area of zero and area of one. We can remap it. Uh, we can also increase the scale offset so there are soft regions in between. Okay. Knowing that, technically speaking, whatever we are trying to do eventually can be replaced by curved spiral because uh, the main point is we need a float range node to add a rotation for every step. So this float range is basically accumulate field node, okay, in which you are trying to accumulate different rotations together according to this four. So now let's change some parameters. As you can see, there are areas with no rotations, there are areas with rotations. So it depends on how you want to change that. Actually, by itself, this is already another animation that I'm going to work with. But that's another story. So what's the difference between this spiral and helical connection? Uh, firstly, we do not have these rotations. Another thing is all this kind of radius change. If you really would like to do the radius change, if you're starting with a spiral, then you probably need to vector mass its vector by multiplication and so on and so forth. That's why I'm using the helical connection node. There are also other benefits to know, other benefits why I'm using this particular approach for this animation. But uh, yeah, but basically that's the idea. Here I'm going to turn this iteration into one for the moment just to make it easier to observe our result. Next, I'm going to do a second level of instancing. So take a point instance, and let's instance on another curve linear. I'm going to, that, I'm going to instance that on the z-axis. And you can see the count 10 is a lot. I'm going to change the type into the step, take the count into three, and take the value into 0.1. So you can see we have, we formed this kind of a triplet. I'm also going to rotate this a little bit, but I probably will do that later. What's really important here is, we're going to start at the sign functions on the top of that. So let's take a realize instance so that we can access all these kind of vertices. Take a set of position. Since we're working with the position, I I can take a position node. There are plenty of ways to do, but I'm not sure which way to go exactly. So let's take a sign function in which we're going to work with a spline parameter because this is kind of curved structure. If you work with directional force, it's a little bit tricky to evaluate this kind of narrow range compared to other wide range differences. Okay. So working with the spline parameter, we can go along with the curve, but I'm going to use the index. The reason is both the factor and the length might change during the time we are animating with this directional fold. Since there is a length change, there is a factor change. So we start with the index. The index is always consistent if we do not change the resolution of our initial spline. So with this sign function, it's outputting values from negative one to positive one. So I'm going to remap that to zero to one and take another remap 
using a lmap 0 to 1. There is no specific reason why I do this, but I think I'm going to combine XYZ and plug this value into the X and the Y and plug in this offset. Then immediately, this is what we're seeing. And obviously, this is not correct. Since we are adding and plus the values here, so it's always going between these kind of two regions. This means that plugging the sign function into the offset is not the way that we should go. Rather, we should start with a position and take a multiply on the vector mat. And then we can potentially change this position. So now we can see the effect is more kind of a circular, but we need to remap this value a little bit better. And for the position, I'm going to take that into one. So now this is how it looks like. We can increase the differences. So we see the effect a little bit better. Another important thing is to actually increase the resolution further. But uh, after we increase the resolution, you also need to realize we need to deal with this kind of rotation. So let's take a 0.25 or further decrease that into 0 0.1 uh, so far. Or and, uh, yeah, 0 0.1 should be fine. So now we have this kind of exaggerated flowery patterns, but it's just kind of a parameter thing that you need to deal with. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. But what's really important here is the this effect currently is working on every vertices so even for this kind of a straight line part is effect is being affected which I do not like so we're going to restrict it uh, restrict this kind of effect by a multiply node with potentially a directional fall I don't think if it will actually work but uh, yeah it seems working yes so now we only have this uh, sign function affecting this kind of a spiral part. Now we finished uh, the sign, the basic sign function parts, and the next we are going to deal with the cosine function, which looks like we are going to duplicate all this kind of node together. However, obviously I'm not going to do that. So instead, I'm going to select all this kind of important node and hit Control G into a group node. And let's name that as a weave unit. So although it's equivalent that we duplicated the entire node tree, but it makes the node tree cleaner to work with. Okay. So in the second unit, instead of using the, the same sign function, I'm going to use the cosine. And then I'm going to transform it and then reverse that like a mirror image and then take a joint geometry to join them together. So this is the image that I'm getting. It's very kind of confusing. So let's give them some volume using a bevel curve node. Let's decrease the radius. It's kind of very difficult to control this uh, 0 0.04. So I recently just made a new node which is called the value precision. By typing at the three, which means you are value is dividing by 1000. So in this case, I think uh, let's just name that into 2 and type in 4, then you're getting 0 0.04. Okay. So that you can slide that easily for more precise control. Okay. So once we have done that, next we're trying to manipulate these kind of values better. There are several parameters I would like to tweak. So let's create a new window because I would like to go into this weave unit. I realize since we're working with the multiply, so we need to have a base value of one. So we start to add one and then we use a negative so that we are plus minus one. And let's tweak this original value. 
as a function of variation. So once we have done that, we can tweak some other parameters. So firstly, let's try not to instance that because we try to tweak the values of these important rotations and try to find a kind of points, eyeballing the points where they are not really intersecting. And you realize it's very difficult to control this tiny magnitude. So here I'm going to use the value position. So by exponent 3, we're dividing by 1000. So we work within this value and trying to tweak all these kind of frequencies, maybe increase or decrease that. So it's kind of basically eyeballing all these kind of differences. And once we have done that, we can start to increase the iterations. And let's increase that to 36. And then we have these kind of structures. So you get a kind of idea how it works. And finally, you just try to tweak these kind of values to get a result you like. I think that this is already weaving enough. If you're unsatisfied with all this kind of sign function, then you can deal with these values. So since this is also a very precise value, so let's also do that with a value precision. Let's take a two and decrease that a little bit. Okay, I think this is good enough. So previously we also instanced it. And let's take another value precision. So that uh, we divide 1000. There are basically just the tons of parameters that we need to change. Maybe decrease by 1000 or take one. Two, three, I think a two should be good enough. And let's increase the values. And by separating that, we can see there are separations of a single strand. Maybe three, four. So these are just the one part. I think this is good enough. Uh, another thing we can do is uh, essentially to take a combine XYZ for the rotation, in which we also need a value precision to deal with uh, a float range. This is not mandatory but just uh, something that uh, you can try but seems not uh, working as expected but uh, yeah you can try with all these kind of parameters in your free times as long as you get a kind of idea you can get nice results as a kind of last step, I'm going to delete these redundant points because obviously I don't think you want to see these points. Before we delete that, I would like to control this directional force using an object. So I'm going to delete all these kind of parameters I set. Instead, I'm going to use an object, which is basically just an empty. And I can scale up this empty to increase the softness of its transition. Okay. So to delete this kind of points, there are two kinds of methods. One is to trim curve. But to trim curve, it works per spline. It's not a, a very nice idea since we're evaluating every point on the curve. So we are going to use delete geometry so that we can delete the points. Okay. Immediately we lose everything, but we need to have a kind of a selection. So here we can use the initial directional fourth, which is from 
the most beginning and we can add a less than to the selection and immediately you do not see anything happen so let's take a 0 0.01 then we lose this kind of redundant part okay if you do not like this deletion you can add a completely new directional fourth using the same object adding the fourth you can try to manipulate this kind of directional offset or the scale I'm going to change that into the Z so now we can increase some directional offset so we're still using the same empty to control everything but there are some ruminants being left or being saved from this deletion here I'm only talking about a kind of concept to deal with this entire animation there are a lot of parameters that you can potentially change so that you can deal with this kind of radius maybe you want to have a larger size of radius then you can increase that and so on and so forth okay uh, another very important thing is we are using directional fold to deal with this animation but it's also possible that you use a proximity fold to deal with this animation so we select the empties and you can see this effect that we are constricting in the middle while the other parts are expanding without any kind of rotation so there are lots of ways that you can play around with this kind of a setup and i hope this is not uh, over complicated in your opinion so i hope you enjoy this tutorial i'll probably see you next time bye bye